Hi, everybody. I am in Vienna today, actually, with my two live guests. So I am super excited. Uh, I would like to introduce them. We have Patricia and Walter. Disclaimer, post-COVID and during COVID, etc., we've all been tested, father and daughter. That's also why they are very close by to each other. So just to put it out there, um, we are live from Zoku. So Patrizia, who, who is the pre-opening sales manager at Zoku, was kind enough to invite me over to be one of the, what do you say? First test so, tester. Yeah. Can we say tester person to experience this one? And you can also, if you're having a look at the video, you can also see in the background one of the fantastic elements of Zoku, but Patrizia is going to tell us a bit more about it in a second. And yeah, so welcome both and thank you for being here. Thank you for having Hello, us. Good morning. Thank yes. you for having us. Yes. So, um, Patricia, first of all, obviously introduce yourself a little bit. And what I would like to know is that what do you do exactly at Zoku? I mean, I've already explained your title, but, but also how did you become involved with this great brand and company? Sure. So, hi, everyone. Um, my name, is, as, as Kate was already saying, is Patricia. I have been working for Zoku for three months now. And we're actually opening tomorrow. It's our official opening date. And uh, yeah, for the past three nights, we've had test sleepers here to experience uh, Zoku and give us some feedback. So Kate was one of them. And um, yeah, so I joined three months ago um, as a pre-opening sales manager, which basically means that it was my job to tell as many people as possible about Zoku Vienna and um, explain the, our concept to them and um, yeah, convince them to work with us. Now closer to the opening, of course, I was doing a bit of everything, PR, marketing, um, events, uh, community. So it's, it's a really, really interesting job and, and I love it so far, so. Yeah. yeah. And how, how did you, obviously you, you come from an extensive experience of hospitality, worked in different city, different mm -hmm. brands and different company, et cetera. How did you come across Zoko, how did you get involved with Zoko? So it's a funny story. Um, actually, I have been wanting to work for Zoko for three years now. So the first time I came uh, across the concept was in 2018 when um, Zoku was coming to our career fair at EHL at Ecole Hotelier de Lausanne. And um, I was talking to them and I just thought that's so interesting and so different to whatever like everyone else was doing. And um, yeah, every career fair they came every semester and I always talked to them. I always annoyed them for an hour. I always stole an hour of their time every day, every time they came. And um, yeah, then I almost worked for them during my internship. Um, I got a job offer from New York though and always wanted to live in New York. You cannot pass on, on that opportunity. So yeah, but I always kept in touch with them. And when Last year, they were looking for a sales manager. I just thought, you know what? I'm just gonna try it. Even though I just graduated, my experience wasn't that that uh, big yet, but of, uh, it worked out. And now I relocated to Vienna for the job. And um, I must say it's everything that I thought it would be. And I love working for Soko. Good, that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've, you've done an amazing job, the whole team. It's uh, like the experience from when you walk in to, uh, I posted a little something actually on Instagram yesterday. I don't know if you've seen it uh, with the Queen song. It's a kind of magic because when you <laughs> when you open the yeah. elevator yeah. and it says what it says, I'm not going to say, so you have to come and experience, you have to experience it. it. It's Absolutely. True. It's true. It really already feels magic. Like, you know, you just press the button, the elevator open and you go like, Oh yeah, and, okay. and, that's, and that's really what we're going for, right? Yeah. So um whoever everyone who knows Zokor has been to Amsterdam, which is our first um one and was the only one until two weeks ago when Copenhagen opened. So now we went within three weeks from one open hotel to three open hotels, which is quite incredible if you think about it yeah um so every zoko is designed in that way you come in and it's very um simple on the ground floor just a uh, clear signage to go up but you don't really know what's gonna be up there and then you come up and the elevator doors open and you you're really just it's a kind of magic that, yeah it's it's a, it's a, it's kind, a kind of, of magic. magic moment and it, uh yeah yeah so it really is i'm and happy you experienced it that way yeah and it's interesting because so this is my first time in uh, experiencing it live. 
I've seen a lot of video, as I said before, you know, uh, Zoku was uh, a part of our video in the summit, uh, the summit we just had. And obviously as a client of Salto, obviously I, I, I've seen a lot of photos and videos and everything, but it's so different to experience it live. Yeah. I really wasn't expecting that much. Yeah. So it was uh, just so good. Um, what I wanted to ask you was, Zoko is often considered a, a great example of hospitality and co-living hybrid. Mm -hmm. hybrid. Um, like it makes both of them uh, but in your opinion well for you what does co-living mean to you personally and also professionally yeah so definitely I think um, so could we always say that we're an, an, a hybrid between a home and an office mm. and uh, and that's really what we're going for um, and how also our lofts are designed so that it's really an, an efficient space where you can live comfortably and also work efficiently. And I think that's really where they did a great, great job, because as you can see in the background, the, the bed is really hidden. <laughs> the bed is really hidden behind this wooden curtain and um, we have pull out stairs. And if you just want to close that area off, uh, it really feels just like a, like a, an office and, uh, and, a, and a work environment or a relaxed environment, but you don't have this, this presence of the bed. And so I think that they did this really, really well because you can combine um, the different areas of your of your life within a really small space. Yeah. And, and that's really what, what co-living um, also means to me because we have upstairs the social spaces where you interact with everyone from the community, where you can really throw yourself into the, the social mingling but at the same time, you have here in the loft everything that you need. So you have a fully stocked kitchen. You have um, enough space, like I said, to, to work or to relax. And um, you always have the choice. And I think this is what makes Soku truly special because there are great service department providers that have a beautiful design, a lot of space, and the apartment is, is just a great product. But um, often what is missing is the, uh, are these zones where you interact with others and where it's really easy for you to also interact with others because not everyone is an extrovert and goes up mm. to someone and is like, hey, let's have a drink and like get to know each other. And that's fine. And that's not, not everyone has to be like that, but you have to create, I think, an environment through design, through the people, through like how you, how you um, set everything up that it's also easy for someone who isn't that outgoing to to mingle and to interact and i think that's that's the the nice thing you you can go to your loft and have a chill evening but the next evening if you feel like it you can go up and it's a completely different environment yeah and what i really like personally obviously as a as a person who comes from the from a fashion and creative background is first of all the color palette that you've chosen which is uh, it's funky enough but it's also zen enough yeah. so it really goes with the brand and I hope I can say that and I'm not spoiling the surprise <laughs> or something. Uh, I really hope so. But what really impressed me straight away as soon as I enter this, uh, you know, the corridor of where my room is, my loft, mm -hmm. actually, sorry. Yeah, is. don't worry, don't yeah, worry. No, no, where my loft is, it's the art exchange wall. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if I'm allowed to say yeah, or yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, my wall. winning a surprise. Yeah. I love it. I love the fact that uh, there is a lot of art mm -hmm. in the loft. And, um, you know, for if I would live here yeah. longer term, yeah. I would want to do that, you know, to rearrange some 100%. of the art, because uh, maybe in summer I feel one thing, one week I feel another, yeah. and just the fact that around the corner there is this wall where I can pick and choose the art yeah. to suit my mood, it's, uh, it's such an important element to live you know, when you live for a long yeah. time somewhere, you should you should always be able to um, personalize your space. Totally. Um, because yeah. if you if there's a, a painting that you don't like, we don't want you to look at it for three months and 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 grow to hate it, yeah. right? So so yeah, the art swap wall is something that uh, is really really for us a facilitator to to have this flexibility for our guests to just mm. exchange that and um, and kind of yeah make it more more feel like home yeah um and and of course when you are here for a longer time you're free to you know buy plants and just just really make it your space of course yeah and uh, and you know what, what you just said about feel free to make this yeah. space or the loft you're on uh, with the fact that obviously the stairs kind of like hide in a sort of way 
And I, I've noticed, uh, you know, I had a bit of experiment because I like that. So you can move the sofa yeah. around, yeah. you can move the table around, you can move the table one side, you can move it closer to the window, whatever you want to. Mm -hmm. So it really, you can really personalize it. Uh, and, and I like that. You can see it has been designed for you to leave long term and yeah. to be able to adapt it yeah. or how you feel. And I, what I really, really like actually is the little space that you have next to the bed to the bed mm -hmm. which you can't really see from here i think but yeah. it's oh i love putting stuff yeah. next to my bed yeah. we actually <laughs> used to have a second tv up there okay um because we thought oh people are gonna love it you know watching tv out of their bed but then in amsterdam we saw that because we always collect a lot of feedback yeah. we saw that no one was using it because everyone's used to having laptop. their ipad yeah. their yeah. laptop their phone yeah. and then we thought okay if there's no added value then we're gonna take it away yeah. because there's a tv right here yeah, exactly um and and just have more storage space up there and people actually really like yes. it because they can put all their books up there if yes. you live here longer exactly you can the library like yes that's exactly yeah. what i would say yeah. like maybe one side i can put my empty suitcase for example and then the other one really personalize yeah. it and, and i think it's a really genius space i mean the one that is now there is a plant and a couple of picture pictures, frames yeah. but it already gives you the idea exactly, of yeah. what you can go with it so yeah. it's really good <laughs> um Moving forward in, uh, with, the, with the look into the future, let's say, what opportunity do you see actually for this type of hybrid co-living, co-working, short slash long-term mm -hmm. uh, scene and environment? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the, like I said before, the one thing that concepts like ours and, and other providers do this also very, very well, um, you offer flexibility. And I think people more and more going to the future, that's the one thing that they value the most because you can get a, a great product, a great bed, great experience in a lot of uh, yeah, different ways. But um, you, our lives are so fast and changing a lot and you just don't know what's gonna happen in a few days. So you have to have um, yeah, an, an environment that adapts to that. So um, for us, I think that's, that's really where we see um, a lot of opportunities because here with us, for example, you can just book one night or seven months and it's the same process and you can easily adapt like shorten your stay prolong your stay um and it's it, you don't have a, a minimum like amount of nights that you have to stay with us and people always tell us that's really what they what they value and yeah. what makes it a, a great experience and i think um now corona has taught us as well that you know when when work life and private life blend um you need to have a certain environment where this is possible and you can do that the most effective way and um and i think there we're also very well set up because you can sh shield off the the bed area you can um which makes it easier for you to work effectively you can invite friends in and and i think that's the future i think more and more um of course certain professions have already had that freedom to work from anywhere mm. to to just be wherever they think um they like it most but more and more um when i also talk to some of my corporate uh, contacts they said that their company going forward will always allow people to have home office days um every week that um they can take not vacation but just out a leave um, and go work from anywhere. Workstation, I think exactly. it's called. Yeah, oh, workstation or something. something like yeah, that is exactly. a new terminology <laughs> now. Workation. Work, work, workation. Workation. No, workation is when you leave in your Workation. Home. Workation. You're yeah. right. Workation. So I, I really do think that, um, of workation. course, not, not every company is going to be like, yeah, fine. an immediate yeah. uh, switch to that. But uh, yeah, I mean, people were, or companies were forced to uh, digitalize and to just change their their outlook on things mm -hmm. and and I think some were positively surprised how well people work in home office and how well it it, it all um, works when they're not actually physically together and also employees have changed their mindset and I think they are gonna also demand a certain flexibility mm -hmm. going forward and and so this will give rise to I think a lot of similar concept to ours um, where where you just allow people to just really live and just do whatever they came here to do. Yeah, I agree. I also think the big corporates company, the more modern one, uh, the, the newer one, let's yeah. say, more than the less traditional and the newer mm -hmm. one, have already picked up that concept yeah. straight away. So I think Twitter is going totally, um, mm -hmm. you know, remote if they wanted to. Yeah. 
Uh, I think Spotify or Shopify has done that as yeah. well. A lot of the, you know, the newer uh, have given that sort of option, but also a lot of them have really understood the concept of co-working spaces. So instead of paying for an office, they're yeah. quite happy to contribute for their employee or collaborators yeah. to stay in a co-working space, mm -hmm. which is great because then it gives these sorts of hybrid models yeah. Uh, a very good opportunity to expand even yeah. further because now people really understand the concept yeah. what was very difficult and they support it yeah. correct what was very difficult before in my eyes at least is that it was very it was harder to explain that actually when you are surrounding yourself by similar people mm -hmm. they live in the same way and they co-work and they do that sort of thing you actually are more productive and more creative as well correct yeah. i might not be working between three and five o'clock in the afternoon maybe because i don't There's know something like happening. i am here yeah. and you know you're literally on the prater yeah is that how I pronounce, am i pronouncing it right yeah. on the prater literally on the doorstep yeah <laughs> so i might say you know what yeah i'm just gonna go and take a couple of rides but then I mean, the co-working area until midnight, maybe mm -hmm. brainstorming with someone yeah. else, which I would then have the possibility if I were yeah. maybe just working from home, me and myself, exactly. all things like that. So that's really good. Yeah. But anyway, we also have Walter here with us, which is, as I said before, it happens to be your dad, uh, but also is our colleague Switzerland ambassador. He's not proud of his daughter at all. You, can't, you can see that. Um, Interesting, Walter, you just had your first event and uh, the recording will be out very soon also. And the topic was also around hospitality and co-living, uh, which I strongly believe is a very hot topic right now. So uh, Patrizia has already told us a lot, but would you like to add something to it? Yeah, I, I think what is really interesting is, uh, I mean, a, a brand is a promise, right? So. So when you when you get here and then you you arrive with all your expectations, right? And then you have heard so many things about Toku in Amsterdam and, and how the brand and this this really innovative room and, and but but you only have seen it from videos, from pictures, and so and then you come here with all these expectations. And and I think the real challenge for the brand is that that you are positively uh, surprised, surprised that you are really. Uh, fulfilling this expectation, but not only fulfilling that you're actually higher, and then that's what you want to create, right? Mm -hmm. What you just described, you walk in, and and it's above this expectation you had. And I think what what a lot of time you see that the expectations which are created are so high, and then when the people arrive, then you don't meet this, and then the people are disappointed and they walk away. And I think this is this is really what what. Uh, what is, is great here. I mean, you, you, you put something out on the market and then the people come and then they're positively surprised. And, and this is exactly the effect you want, you want to have, right? And, and um, Patricia said it, flexibility today, flexibility and convenience are, are really the two things today people are, are striving for. Our, our life is changing. The pandemic has, has, uh, has accelerated yeah. all, all this and, and, and these products have been invented before based on trends, which everybody, they have been visible, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of people didn't, didn't start to cater to it and, and, and really have a brain crunch and say, how can we do something mm -hmm. for this? Mm -hmm. And, and, and Toko has done it. And I think the success will be there. I mean, you can already see it, right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm also a big fan of the hybrid. I mean, I like living in his traditional way as well as, but I also think this concept of hybrid, you know, super flexible, yeah. like, why can I not, even if I only need to stay one week, for example, for work somewhere, why do I need to just stay in an Airbnb on my own or in a more traditional uh, hotel. hotel, let's yeah. say, or accommodation style, where actually straight away when I'm here, you know, I know I can, you know, there are events, there are networking, I can get to know the community. It's for me, and. I mean, that this is my opinion, obviously. I see this one as we've so grown out of hostels in a sort of way, like maybe a little bit the older generation mm -hmm. as well. But we still want that feeling. Yeah. You know, when I was much yeah. younger, that's exactly what I, wh why did I pick hostel? It wasn't just because of the price. Mm -hmm. And a lot of time people also were not picking the hostel because of the price, but because you go there yeah. and you're straight away immersed on people that are very similar to you. Yeah. Uh, community events, communal stuff, etc. 
And so, you know, you feel comfortable of traveling on your own or being on your own because straight away you pick up, you know, yeah. people, tips, um, events, community yeah, and, just and input like just it makes you think about different things right and i think our co-founder um hans meyer when he was first thinking about developing zoku in 2009 he was also saying this so there's nothing that gives you the experience you have in a hostel um when you like you were just saying um not only traveling for the experience of traveling but actually also have to work so in a hostel you have a great social environment and it's an awesome experience yeah. but you have zero privacy you don't have the the equipment or the space that you need to actually store your things and also work efficiently and then on the other hand you have a great um long stay products um amazing like i was saying before like really big uh, apartments where you have everything that you need but you don't have the social zones so he really wanted to create something that was in between these two and it hasn't it does it didn't exist before yeah and 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 i think that's uh that's when someone says oh it's kind of like a hostile vibe i think that's the most amazing um, description of what yeah. we're trying to go for because that's really what we want it's like an elevated hostel experience where you have everything in your loft and you can have this this private environment your own four walls but you upstairs you you have this 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 hostile vibe yeah. so i'm happy that you you experienced that yeah i i really feel that you know like uh as i was saying you know i've always been a fan of this sort of environment because then you go what what i find very sad and again this is obviously my personal opinion if i travel somewhere for holidays or work as well and i get booked into a hotel and then you go to work, you do something, or sometimes you have to work maybe from the hotel. Mm -hmm. And it's just me all the time. Yeah. It's very difficult to, how can I say? I'm very extrovert, as you've noticed, but it's also very difficult because like here, if you want to come and stay, if you book a Zoko, it's mm -hmm. because you already understand the community. Yeah. So if you see me on the corridor or on yeah. the or in the elevator space, you straight away, both of us will be like, hi, hi. Also, how long have you been here? Uh, you know, is this your first time? This is amazing. It's a, in the hotels, it's very much mm -hmm. like, hello, hello. That's it. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, good morning. You have to go to. Uh, <laughs> you're going to third floor. OK, bye. Yeah. And that is it. Yeah. And it's very cold. Okay. It's very uh, anonymous anonymous yeah, and yeah. this is why i think you know um hospitality has a lot to learn from colibri and vice versa yeah and i think like, uh, i think concepts like ours that are like you were saying a bit in between um like normal hospitality products and co-living i think it's it's the best way for people to ease into it yeah. because they they come here maybe for just a few nights and they they start thinking about ah oh, this is designed in a way that i could stay longer so what, what does that mean? Like, why would I have to do that? Is that possible for me in my current job? Or like, I don't know, I think it's really the first interaction for a lot of people mm -hmm. with the idea of living in like a micro apartment and actually blending um, traveling and working and, and living. So, so I think, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a nice way for people to have the first like touching base the first time with, with the idea of co-living. Yeah. I, I see. I think it's also that everything is blending now, right? Like, like uh, leisure, leisure hotels and 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 business hotels, right? All, all these, yeah, all, all these these uh, borders, they, they, they yeah, it, it's it's blending a lot. I mean, when when you say before, you said that in in the hotel, uh, like you just say good morning and then and then that's it. Um, it's it's not black and white, right? You you have hotels where where um, the hospitality in the hotel and and the 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 people working mm -hmm. in this hotel they they have been able to create yeah hundred percent even in a business hotel this ambience where you would start to talk to each other, yeah. but then some others um, didn't uh, are not able to to create this this philosophy. And I think this is what what these brands are now doing that they show they show to Everyone. everybody who wants to see it that it's actually that it's actually possible right that that and and that's that's why what you said there will be more and more products like this because this is a a, a big need today of many mm -hmm. people because people are moving around more they have not like a, a job for 12 months or for three years they have like maybe a job for a few months this time is in this city next time is in another city and that's why these need these products are, are they, they are needed today yeah, really definitely. There is um, 
a need of mm -hmm. rethinking hospitality, which is also the title of uh, uh, a panel that we will host at Colive on Thursday. So if you're listening to this one on the later stage, Thursday, the 3rd of June, so you might have missed it, but the recording will be out too. And Patrizia, you will be one of our uh, guests uh, in, uh, in the panel in there. So I'm really looking forward to that and to dig a bit deeper into this topic. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's been fantastic. So thank you very much uh, for your time to, to both of you. Thank of you, Patrizia and the whole team at Zoku for inviting me uh, to the opening and just really making me experience this kind of magic. That's how I'm going to associate Zoko yeah, from now on. Zoko, with yeah. the, it's a kind of magic. I really think so. And uh, I'm really looking forward to see where your journey will take you personally and also the brand. Uh, I had the possibility to speak to some of the other team and they've already told me some of the plans in the future. And so I'm looking forward to coming to more opening or experiencing more yeah, Zokos and um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to unlock more doors. Very good. <laughs> Yeah, no. Thank sure. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. And best of uh, luck. And uh, see you soon, guys. See you. See you.